Turning. Wheels are turning. We are live on YouTube right now. This is Scott with the Scotch Test Dummies. Bart is absent. Bart is in Denver, Colorado for work. And tomorrow night on Saturday night, he's planning on going to Stranahan's. They're in Denver. They're doing their Cask Thief uh, annual June special release. <clears throat> he's planning on going there with Wes Jolly. And I saw Wes tuning in here a little bit ago commenting. Looks like he's still here. Hopefully, Bart makes it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Joining me tonight from Dallas, uh, Whiskey Crusaders, Matt and Sarah. They're minus Will. But Julian, uh, Teeling uh, brand ambassador, is here. And uh, you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves and let Julian introduce himself. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm Matt. We're Whiskey Crusaders out here in uh, DFW and hanging out and thanks for having us on Scott. This is Julian. So. Scott, thank you so much. My name is Julian and I am the uh, brand ambassador here in Texas for Teeling Whiskey Company. Thanks for having me. And how long you been doing that? Uh, I've been with the company for about three years, specifically on Teeling for uh, going on a year now. Okay. And what other whiskeys besides Teeling do you represent or is it just Teeling? I just work on Teeling. I'm yeah, solely, solely focused, but it's plenty. Keeps me busy. <laughs> good, good. That's a, a good job, I'm sure. So, yeah, that could be a lot worse jobs being a brand right. ambassador. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> terrible. Dr Dr Hang out with whiskey all day. Yeah. 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 If, if you don't like if you don't like drinking whiskey and if you don't like talking to people about whiskey, then this is not the job for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds perfect. Are you from Dallas, Julian? Yes, sir. I uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I, I grew up here. I moved around a little bit, and then uh, I got back here. And I want to say about six, seven years ago, I have a bartend uh, background in bartending and uh, kind of moved over to the brand ambassador side from there. And I've really been enjoying myself, uh, you know, working, uh, working with whiskey. I, uh, I represented St. Germain previously, which was a ton of fun, uh, great experience. But they called me and they said, hey, how would you like to uh, drink whiskey every day instead of St. Germain every day? And I think that was kind of a little bit of a no brainer. Twist my arm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Best choice ever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to play dumb because I don't even know what St. Germain is. Uh, I, I, didn't know we were doing a, I didn't know we were doing a show on St. Germain. It's <laughs> <laughs> double flower liqueur, you know. Uh, you, you dream of, Scott. You, you probably have one back there. Uh, I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, uh, okay. So admittedly, I'll tell you, we got into, uh, we were doing just scotch when we first started doing reviews and it's been over five and a half years ago, we were just going to do scotch. Uh, we started branching out. I think we did, you know, an Irish whiskey or two, um, maybe a Japanese slipped in on us at that time. And then we were like, you know, we're in the United States. We should be doing bourbons as well. We branched out. And for a while, I really didn't go back to Irish that much until about three months ago or so when my, I would be sitting around sipping on scotch, bourbon, whatever. And I don't, my wife would be with me and I'd always be like, here, honey, just take a little sip of this and see what you think. And she, I mean, she was always repulsed. It was whiskey was bad, uh, wrinkled nose, terrible f expressions. And she got to where she would be like, okay, well, that one's not too bad. That one doesn't suck. That one's worse than the one the other night, you know, along those lines. Well, I gave her red breast Lustau one night and she tasted it and she said, well, that one's not horrible. That one's not bad. Right. And about two nights later, she goes, let me have some more of that one you gave me the other day. And I was like, really? I said, well, that was, that's an Irish whiskey. It's red breast Lustau. Yeah. You know, Irish whiskeys typically are triple distilled. They come off a little bit smoother, a little bit lighter can. And I think that's kind of why I hadn't, you know, been going back to them too much. But since my wife has started, my wife is really, I, I, I'm, I've got bottle kills going on here every night now. She's just down and stuff left and right. So, and I've been buying more Irish whiskeys for her to get into and to try. So my appreciation for Irish whiskeys over the last couple months has really grown. Is it saving the marriage, I guess, the Irish whiskey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as far as. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, like I say, and, and probably the last three months or so, I've, I've drank more Irish whiskey uh, than I have in the last five years. 
Um, uh, Bart and I recently went to Ireland. We were invited over by Waterford Distillery. Uh, Mark Rainier is uh, running that. And we uh, went over, got kind of a, a behind the scenes tour and then went up to Scotland from there. But no, uh, anyway, why don't you kind of, Julian, tell us a little bit about how you got, or I guess you already did a little bit. Um, tell us something about Irish whiskey and tealings. Well, I mean, you're, I mean, you're, I mean, you're pretty much spot on. Uh, I think that uh, as of five years ago, there wasn't anybody really drinking a whole lot of Irish whiskeys aside from, you know, uh, you know, aside from a couple brands that we're all pretty familiar with. And I, and I think that you're spot on as well that, uh, you know, for most of us whiskey nerds, if you close your eyes and you think Irish whiskey, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's lighter, it's, uh, super duper approachable. It's, uh, lower in proof. And, you know, uh, most of the time aside from red breast or, you know, anybody that's kind of doing a single pot still, I think that it's kind of a, a little bit of a single note. And for us, a big part of the reason that we started the Teeling Irish whiskey company is because we wanted to, uh, we wanted to kind of buck that trend and we wanted to show that you can make really interesting, really nuanced and, um, and really fun Irish whiskeys, um, you know, and distribute them worldwide. And so for, and, you know, so for us, I think, I think we really want to change the perception a little bit of Irish whiskey. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a giant fan of Jameson's or Bushmills. And so Teeling is probably the second uh, Irish I actually really liked after Sexton because it's the first I hadn't gone back in years because I'm like, it's not very good. Why would I want to drink this? And they're like, hey, they do make good whiskey. It's amazing. Now, um, I know in the, so you, you mentioned five years ago. I know there's been a boom in Irish whiskey just over the last, pro well, probably starting five years ago, but over the last couple of years, Irish whiskey, I think, has really seen a growth. We're seeing a uh, we're seeing a real trend towards Irish whiskey. I think that I think there's a um, I think that there is from a public's point of view. I think that Scotch is becoming a little bit uh, on the pricier category. So I think that people are kind of more going towards leaning towards that for special occasions. And I think that we're finding that uh, bourbon just really can't seem to keep up with demand. And so people are looking for uh, that alternative. Um, I've had some good Canadian whiskeys, but I haven't had a lot. And so I think people are looking for uh, looking towards Ireland and, you know, uh, we see that we're growing as a category 10% a year. And I think that that's huge. And, you know, uh, it's definitely on the rise. And I think that, I think that especially with Teeling, we're finding that uh, people are starting to understand that there are really good Irish whiskeys out there that are more interesting than some of the other ones that maybe we've had in the last 15, 20, 30 years. Thank God. And it's yeah. 46 instead of 40, which yes, is a sir. huge difference. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, we love to see that in whiskeys. You pick up something and it's, you know, it's got that 46, 48% on there. You're just like, thank God. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> the Irish do make over 40. It's possible. Well, you know, the thing something, is, something interesting for us, not to interrupt, but, uh, you know, we did, we did some market testing and we did talk to some bartenders and we did talk to uh, some of the consumers. And that was really a lot of the consensus was that, Irish whiskeys were a little bit on the light side. And so we wanted something that's mixable in cocktails. It'll stand up. If you want to put some fruit juice in there, or if you want to put, um, you know, a soda, a grapefruit soda, a ginger or something like that in there, we wanted something that would really, you know, still give the cocktail a little bit of a backbone. And so that's how, uh, that's how we came up with, uh, with 92 proof. We feel like that's kind of the sweet spot for us. It highlights the whiskey and uh, really, uh, really gives big, bold flavors, which isn't kind of traditional, in Irish whiskey, right. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Right. <laughs> I'm going to say thank God for all these things because <laughs> it's all the reasons that I didn't drink Irish whiskey. It's all the things they changed is why I drink Irish whiskey now. Now, and how big, um, Raster asked a little bit ago in a comment, he wanted to know how big Teeling is. Where do you guys fall in the, the pecking order, would you say, as far as production? Uh, lower than the big boys, Tullamore Dude, Bush Mills, Jameson, where I'd say... Uh, less than a tenth of Jameson. If that gives you kind of an idea of barrel production, uh, but we are a global brand. We are distributed all over the world. Uh, we opened up the distillery in uh, 2015 and we opened up with uh, with quite a bit of stock. The, the Teeling family is a fifth generation uh, distilling family. And so uh, we opened up, we opened up with quite a bit of back stock, kind of like what we call kind of like the, uh, you know, the Teeling Whiskey Library or Barrel Library, I think a little bit more appropriately. It's a good problem. So that, yeah, so that kind of gave us an opportunity to get a jump start. But we opened up the distillery. We started doing uh, 
pot still whiskey in 2015 and started the company in 2014. Oh, okay. That, that's relatively new. It is relatively yeah. new. I didn't realize that. Uh, Aussie whiskey guy comments. He says Teeling is probably the most sold Irish in Australia. Hmm. So good. Very that's nice. awesome. Our, uh, our global brand ambassador, his name is Rob. He's Australian. And he would love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Well, let's start with, okay, so we have the small batch tonight. Yes, sir. We have the single grain and we have the single malt. So let's start with the small batch, Julian. Why don't you uh, walk us through it? Yeah, I'd be happy to I'll pour myself a little taste while we're, uh, while we're at it. So um, small batch for us is kind of our... I say it's our entry level whiskey. It's actually my favorite of, uh, of all the whiskeys that we do. It's, um, it's a blend of uh, corn and malted barley. I think we mentioned earlier that we do, uh, that we do bottle at uh, 92 proof, 46% alcohol. This, uh, this whiskey sees, uh, sees age in bourbon barrels and whenever it's ready, we don't put a time stamp really on when it's ready because, you know, I feel like the trend is kind of moving towards when whiskey's ready, it's ready. Barrels are different. Not every barrel is going to act right, the same when it tastes right. And so uh, when I was annoying our uh, master distiller in Dublin a couple of weeks ago, um, he can, he's thrilled to be rid of me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I'm asking. I was like, you know, is it, is it three years? Is it five years? Is it seven years? Is it ten years? Like, what is it? And he said, uh, he told me, he's like, uh, he's like, when he gets that rum raisin nose, yeah. which is really what he's looking for, that's when he plug, That's when he puts it in a, uh, in a uh, Central American rum barrel. And so he really wants to accentuate that. That's really what we're going for is that rum raisin sort of quality. And so when you taste it, to me, I, I hate to use the word sweet because that's really not the, not the quite the right word, but it's got a dried uh, fruit characteristic. Yeah. Like maybe like a prune or apricot or a raisin or something like that. I get raisin. Yeah. And so you kind of get that right off the nose. And that's really what we're going for. And that's really what we like. We like big, bold flavors on the mid palate. And then we like uh, we like a nice warm finish. We want you to know you're drinking yeah. something when you're drinking teeling whiskey. Yeah, this would definitely stand up in a cocktail or to ice or anything. This is, oh, yeah. yeah. You definitely get that, that, that peppery finish on the end for sure. You know you're drinking whiskey. And I like that. Dev, I mean, definitely that kind of that that buttery Irish uh, yeah, sensibility to it. Buttery Irish note. Yeah, it's got that pepper and it's got that dried fruit. Now we'll use I'll use sweet, and it, I mean most of the time I can different. You know what kind of sweet are you talking? Are you talking honey sweet? You know sugar sweet, citrus sweet. You know I've had some. If if they're too young, usually you can't tell on the yeah. nose, and it's just like I get a sweetness. I mean, there's something in there. I don't know what it is. See, I get honey and vanilla on the nose on this one. Yeah, there's definitely light citrus. For me, it's a yeah. dried fruit quality to too. it. Yeah, the like maybe an apricot, sweetness. like a dried yeah. apricot. Yeah, apricots, exactly. Like that. That's exactly right. what I'm getting. Yeah. You know what I find that's really fascinating about this whiskey is when you're mixing it in cocktails and when you're and when you're blending it. I mean, it makes a great old fashioned. It does great with whiskey cocktails. But what really surprised me is this uh, this whiskey is actually a great substitute for rum in tiki drinks because it kind of has those characteristics to it. So I'll do Mai Tais with it. I'll do uh, daiquiris. It makes a fantastic daiquiri. Nice. But uh, but being overproof, it really does kind of hold up nicely with a lot of fruit juices and a lot of a lot of different things. Passion fruit is really good with it. Pineapple is really good with it. It doesn't get lost. Yeah. It really stands up. And, you know, my mixology friends would appreciate me saying that, I think, as well, too. Absolutely. No, I've had the, uh, the small batch. It's been a while. It's very surprised. It surprised me. Um, it's delicious. It's very good. A great entry level uh, bottle. There's I'm getting like a, a toasted toffee um, as well in there with it. And that that buttery caramel, the citruses. Yeah, it's very nice. Get a little peppery on the finish. A little peppery. Right. And it, I mean, it tickles the nose a little bit. We like that overproof. Yeah. And so we want like that's exactly what we're looking for is is that oomph. You know, but that little bit of sweetness and a little bit of heat, I think it balances really nicely. I'm really proud of this whiskey. I think this is probably one of my favorites. We might get to another one of my favorites later if we're lucky, yeah. but this is one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, I enjoy this. Yeah, uh, no, very surprising. Like I say, it's been a while since I've that. Sorry, I had to try to pull something up there. Um, that's what she said. <laughs> I had a mouthful of whiskey. You got to it before me. 
<laughs> you know, I think something I think something to mention on this, um, just kind of a point of interest that I thought was fun. Uh, we do we do actual small batches on this. Uh, you know, uh, our batches are between 100 and 150 barrels a piece. And so it's really hands on with our, uh, you know, with our master blender. His name is Alex Chasco. And uh, and he he literally like blends every batch and it's 150 ish barrels. And if something needs, you know, a nine or more or a 10 year old that it's not it's not getting that rum enough, he'll put that in there or, you know, or if it, if it needs a little brightness and he needs a younger whiskey, he'll throw a three or four year old, five year old whiskey in there. And so it really is it, it really is kind of an art of, um, you know, recreating what it is that we're looking for. And it does evolve a little bit, I will say. That's the job I want. <laughs> no kidding, right? <laughs> now, uh, and this was probably, uh, at least four years ago, we reviewed this. Oh, wow. And it was probably the first, and for a long time, the only whiskey that had been aged in rum barrels. So now we're kind of seeing that trend you know, or a lot more people are all of a sudden aging whiskey and rum barrels. Yeah. Were, were you guys the first, do you think, or what, where was you at in there? Do you know? I mean, to my knowledge, I mean, obviously Scotland's been doing it for a long time. We've got some Caribbean rum cast from Balvini and, uh, True. You know, and, I, and I, and I think that, I mean, I think that I don't think it's any secret to use different right. barrels right. as a technique, but, uh, as far as Irish whiskey, you know, um, Jameson does some different beer casks and some stuff like that, but uh, to my knowledge, and I can't, I can't speak 100% to the category, but I can't say that I hadn't seen anything else finished in rum barrels like ours uh, uh, are. And well, and even that being said, I mean, we do a full nine one. months to yes. a year in those rum barrels. Yeah, totally. 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 You know, kind of when we were developing these whiskeys, they wanted to kind of get a little bit of feedback from some of the uh, some of the Irish whiskey nerds that were there in Dublin. Um, you know, and and so they did uh, they did some different barrel finishes. They did a sherry barrel finish. They did a few different barrel finishes, and everybody could really pick them out. I think they did six different finishes, and there it, it was pretty obvious until the rum barrel finish came out. And you know, this group of whiskey nerds, nobody really could pinpoint exactly what it was. And I think that that's really like the, the the moment that we discovered like this is what we want to do because it's something interesting, it's something unusual, it's pleasant to the palate, and so boom, this is it. Let's move forward, and this is going to be our flagship whiskey. I like it. Yeah, very, yeah, very, yeah. Uh, like I say, th this is your kind of your entry level or your 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 lowest priced bottle, isn't it? Absolutely, so like four. Yeah, bucks. yeah. I think uh, depending on where you go, I I, I see it for. I, I think. I, I was at a uh, liquor store yesterday. It was thirty nine ninety nine. So, okay. don't quote me on that, please. No. Well, and I think that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. But yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, exactly. That would be kind of high. I think this is actually thirty dollar range here, anyway. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah that's even better yeah, for buy, you guys. Buy it all then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you guys. Hmm. By the way, I had uh, the London Whiskey Club coin on that one. Oh, yeah. I got Bill's whiskey dick one on this one. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, oh, nobody likes a dick in their, in their whiskey. Anyway. <laughs> Just a solid Richard, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sam loves the D, though, so, you know, it happens. You can leave my comment to myself. All right, let's go on to... Uh, this, now I have not had the single grain before, so this one will be new for me. I'm excited to share it with you. So, um, single grain is uh, I, this one's this was kind of its own animal. It's it's I feel like it's completely different from the other two that we're going to taste today. Um, it's a uh, this is a corn whiskey, and I think the idea behind this whiskey was we initially wanted to do something maybe for our. Uh, for our bourbon category drinkers and kind of do something that would maybe uh, maybe appeal to, uh, you know, to the United States as far as a whiskey drinking category is concerned, as opposed to scotch, which is our single malt ish uh, sort of sort of idea. But um, but I think what we ended up with was something way more interesting. And I've never really tasted a whiskey that's anything like this. Um, so this is uh, this is a corn whiskey. It's Asian French oak, 
which I think is uh, unusual. It provides a little bit of a uh, different tanning structure to it. And uh, the, the oak barrels that we use, the French oak barrels that we use, have actually previously seen uh, California wine. So uh, there's, a predominant, uh, there's a predominant winery in California, I can't name the name of it, that we get our barrels from, but they age their Cabernet in these French oak barrels uh, once or twice and get sort of like the, the big oak flavors out of it. And once they're seasoned a little bit, there's quite a bit of wine in there left in the oak barrels. And so they send them over to us in Dublin. And we put our corn whiskey in that and uh, age it, you know, four, five, six, seven years, whatever, whatever really is po is uh, is proper, whenever it's quite ready. But uh, but for me, when I uh, when I taste this one, I get it's 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 on the lighter side, I think, but it's got a little bit more of a mouthfeel, and then I get like a big white pepper finish to it. But you can definitely tell that the oak is different on this. It's not that it's not that ex bourbon. It's it's. Uh, noticeably different. The mouthfeel is different, and uh, I mean, it's just very unusual. It's uh, it's a it's a neat neat whiskey. I really enjoy this one. Yeah, for those asking, real quick, Bart is uh, out of town for work. He's in Denver, and he is planning tomorrow night on going to Stranahan's Distillery for their uh, annual June Cask Thief release. So he's going to be there. West Jolly is uh, going to be there. He was tuning in earlier. Hopefully, he's still in here. But um, no, the the nose on this is different i don't I, i'm trying to think of anything else i've had like it and i don't think i would say that's an irish whiskey on the nose no you definitely get the corn up front on it but it's not like a bourbon corn where it's all hay and varnish yeah it's not yeah. as sweet as the bourbon corn at all i get a real dryness on the finish to this you guys yeah. get that a little mm -hmm. bit where it's like a peppery kind of dryness very much. it's unusual it's pleasant but it's very unique i think we got a question in here is this 100 percent corn yes if, if not 100%, it may be 5% variance, but 95 to 100% corn. So is Bart spending the night in a tent in front of a strand of hands tonight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Bart would not do that, first of all. Well, now, we, we've talked about that. Like, so if we had a store here doing a lottery for Van Winkle, we would not go get in line and wait for two days to get a Van Winkle release. We've talked about it. We would go to Stranahan's because theirs is more like an event. They've got like people out there playing live music. They've got uh, food trucks and all kinds of people grilling. Uh, I mean, it's more of an event at Stranahan's. Giant so he party. might he might get a tent and camp out there. It'd be better than getting a tent and camping out in Dallas, Texas. I'll tell Ooh. you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just horrible B.O. <laughs> 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 yeah. well. No, I get that white pepper that you're talking about. It's got a little spice on the end, too. But, you know, I, I think you guys mentioned it earlier when we were uh, when we were sampling it. It's got quite a bit of kind of a vanilla and a little it's oakiness to it. It's got some of those bourbon it. notes yeah. to it yeah. which, in the background. Uh, which I'm not sure that I had really kind of realized until, until we had talked about that earlier. But it's, it's very pleasant. It has more vanilla than the small batch, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely more defined, um, but yeah, it's less really less fruity. I think yeah, there's less like fruity. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah, there's almost fruit. a lack of fruit with it. Yeah, there's no. Fruit. Yeah, yeah. If anything, it's kind of like that. Uh, it's kind of like a little bit of that wine. It's I all mean, the baking spices. Something kind of fun about this whiskey, we pick up a little bit of that wine color from this whiskey, mm -hmm. and so that's why we put it in the clear glass mm -hmm. because okay. we really do kind of enjoy. Uh, you can. I don't know if maybe you guys can see it, but mm -hmm. you get a little bit of that cabernet color. It comes okay. through, and so that's why we did clear glass with this one, and we're very proud of that. I got to give a shout out real quick. I can't find my cowbell. I don't know where it went to. Pit Faced Barbecue sent in a five dollar super chat. He says Teeling is a wonderful Irish. Do you find much resistance from people that only associate Irish whiskey with shots of Jameson? Also, Matt is my hero. He says, <laughs> "I'm awesome." What can I say? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously. Uh, oh, yeah. I've, I feel like Jameson drinkers are very loyal. Um, so, I mean, it's not necessarily that Jameson is a bad thing. I don't want to come out here and say anything That's what negative. That's the bars have. Right, and I don't want to say anything yeah. negative. I think I think what's good for the category is really good for all of us. And I think, oh, yeah. I, I think that if we can get people to, you know, kind of reconnect with Irish whiskey mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, whatever they're drinking or, or just rediscover it. I think right. that that's a good thing. And so, um, you know, I, I think that we're just stylistically a little bit different. I think that we're doing something that, 
is a uh, big bolder flavor yeah. as opposed to being uh, more approachable and lighter. So oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, nothing, nothing against Jameson, but it, no, you know, right. stylistically, like I would say nothing against crown crown Royal either, but it's, it, you know, it, 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 you know, it is what it is. Matt has feelings. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, that's the voice of God, by the way, the, the, the pit face there. So, you know, oh, yeah. it's all good. Now, um, there is, there is a strong maltiness, almost grassiness. I know it's corn, but there is like a a dusty field type uh, palette to this. But then that, that the Irish butteriness sneaks in there on the back end of it to me. It's like what you said. It's dry. It's drier. It might be that wine. Well, it's the wine and the French yeah. oak together. Yeah. And, and that's something that I haven't really experienced before I tried this whiskey, but it has a richness but a dryness at the same time, which I which I find unique and I find fascinating. I like, I, I like to go back to it. You know, right. like I set it down and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I want to try that again. You know, it's yeah, I've like had a, this one in my collection, so yeah. I love it. It's got like a cornmeal uh, yeah. kind of taste mm -hmm. to it. Like that you have just freshly milled cornmeal that's you know sitting in a barn. I don't like that. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. I really like this I like one it. a lot. Dandelion. Hey, there you go. A little bit, yeah. A little bit in the pasture, a yeah. little bit in the field, a little bit of dandelion. Exactly. Yeah. I think this the last one had like a hint of sweetness. This does not. Yeah. Yeah. You know. To I mean, there's there's a little bit of toasted. There's yeah, a little bit of spice, a little bit of uh, pepperiness <laughs> on the palate, the the field, the the dandelion. Um, there is some. Um, there's a little bit of citrus sweetness. Yeah, in the very back of the finish, there is. Yeah, I agree with you. Light, light citrus sweetness. Yeah, like a, like an orange zest more than anything. Yeah, and Mark Brown says, thankfully, I don't know what dandelion tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aussie Whiskey Guy is asking, he says, uh, was it the Teeling 24-year-old that won a World Whiskey Award recently? It was 100% the Teeling 24-year-old that won uh, the uh, world's best single malt for the World Whiskey Awards, and we are humbled and very proud of that as well. Um, yeah, we're super lucky. We sold out of it 95% of it. We got a thousand bottles of it and it was 95% gone by the time that we got the award. So uh, definitely a feather in the cap and we're, and we're super, we're super proud of that. It's a, you know, I, a big accomplishment and big hats off to uh, Alex Chasco, our master, our master distiller. Um, yeah. Pretty incredible. Yeah. Well, plus you sold it prior to the award, which actually makes it even more. We sold, yeah, we sold out of it. Um, you know, there may be a bottle or two running around here somewhere. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, and what, for those that are watching that don't know, Matt hosts tastings at his house. And then we, so we started kind of doing these lives beforehand as well, occasionally. But I thought you had brought a bottle of 24 year old. I thought I saw the box there a little bit ago. Well, there may be one left in Texas. There may be one. And I might have it with me too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we'll just take a gander here and this will be signed by uh our master distiller very nice is that one open we can open yet. It. We, it will be <laughs> <laughs> if you if you want to sit and watch us talk about how good it is we could do that <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'm not into that kind of thing <laughs> don't worry you will you'll get you some <laughs> Yeah, we made a thousand bottles of it. We've got a, uh, we actually got a twenty-nine-year-old coming out here uh, pretty soon. That's going to be, uh, that's going to be released here in the states, I believe, uh, within the next couple of weeks. So we're pretty excited about that coming along. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the twenty-four is such an honor. It's such a, uh, you know, it's 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 a humbling experience for us as a young whiskey company to, uh, you know, to be able to uh, really kind of give a little bit of recognition to the guys that are really working so hard. Doing the really hard work and and really making uh, this fantastic whiskey that we're all so proud of. It's nice to see that uh, that it gets a little bit of recognition on a on a global scale. So we couldn't be more proud of it. We couldn't be more proud of our guys back in Dublin. Really, very nice. And how often do you get to have? Have you been over to Dublin? Yeah, I was there two weeks ago. As a matter of fact. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I was blessed. So it's uh, incredible. I got off the plane back to Dallas and then like I got hit in the face with a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, we went over. So that was our first international trip going over, but we flew over kind of through the nighttime or our nighttime. So we got there, you know, midday uh, into flew into Dublin and then drove south to Waterford. Yeah. When we came back, though, we flew, we left early morning and was back late, you know, late at night or well, mid evening here, which was better. So we thought for Irish or for international flights, always try to fly out early morning. So you're just flying through your normal daytime and you're going to be tired by the time you get there anyway, because you've been on a plane for 10 yeah. hours. Next time I'm going with you because I did the opposite and it wrecked me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now we did learn as well. Once once we got back, someone said, "Well, because we flew from Dallas to Heathrow, and then Heathrow to Dublin." Someone said, "Well, you should have flown from like Wichita or Dallas to Chicago, and then Chicago straight into uh, Dublin." That's the way that I went, and it. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, but well, this is kind of this is kind of funny. So, like I said, I was out there a couple of weeks ago, and um, it's amazing how much. Uh, the Irish and uh, specifically Dublin really embrace this whiskey. You don't see it a whole lot here. Um, it's it's around. You'll catch it in bars here and there, and you'll catch it in liquor stores uh, here and there. But it's literally everywhere that you go in Dublin and in Ireland as a whole. I, I spent a couple more days after my trip, and I went to Galway, which is on the exact opposite coast of the country. Oh, okay. Uh, it only takes about three hours to get yeah, there. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's not Texas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but I mean, like, like Teeling really is embraced in Ireland when you're there. You see, uh, you see the Teeling barrels up in front of the bars and the pubs and stuff. And so uh, it really kind of gave me a little bit of a new confidence to come back to the states and and uh, really feel comfortable introducing this whiskey and and uh, and talking about this whiskey and sharing it with my friends. Uh, you know, when when you have when you have it so popular in the place that it's made. You know, you can't ask for anything more than that. So, uh, so I'm very, very proud of this whiskey. I'm very, very proud to share it with you guys. Yeah. Good. And thank you. So I got to ask as well, and there's been a couple of comments Would you, when you said it uh, between the 24 and then a 29 year old com coming out, where's that coming from? Were, were you guys distilling 29 years ago, just not selling? Right. No. So, uh, I mean, that's a great question. And, uh, so, you know, uh, Jack and Steven Teeling, which are the owners of our company, it's the Teeling brothers. They're, uh, they're younger guys. They're about, I mean, they're about our age. Um, they are fantastic, but they are fifth generation. So they've been in the whiskey industry five generations. Their father, um, owned, uh, Cooley distillery. I think I can say that on Cooley distillery <laughs> and, uh, and nobody, nobody's watching. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I say whatever I want. Right. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and so Jack Teeling, who's uh, one of our founders, uh, it's the brothers, Stephen and Jack, um, he, was, uh, he was on the board in some capacity. I'm not sure exactly what. Whenever they sold Cooley Distillery, they sold it to Jim Beam. And, uh, and so uh, he had an opportunity when that sale happened to make a large purchase of the whiskey that they were already making. So it was a Teeling family whiskey. And so there's a, right. there's a big cache of ceiling family uh, barrels that they had basically three days to figure out what to do with. They had to get them out of the Cooley warehouses. They rented a warehouse up in Northern Ireland and put them in there, uh, plugged them in there. And so really it was with that. And then, um, you know, some <laughs> I think interesting financial moves that right. they kind of got the money and, and had um, and had some of the older whiskey to be able to start the company with. But uh, but I assure you, uh, you know our hand, our whiskey's handmade. I've been to the distillery. There's three giant pot stills right there in the heart of Dublin, and so um, and so really, it's it's as much of a good thing as you can imagine. And it's also I think it also kind of speaks to the idea of what our whiskey is, where it is a tip of the hat and a nod to um, you know kind of the tradition of Irish whiskey. But also we're going to put our own stamp on it. We want to do something a little bit different. And I think that we accomplished that through our barrel finishes and stuff. Oh, yeah. And so, so it's a younger, it's a younger idea and a, and a younger uh, generational push towards something innovative, which with, uh, with Irish whiskeys. And so I think that that's important to know. And I think that, I think that our story kind of reflects that as well. Definitely. So how many trucks did it take to get it? Three days. They told me, <laughs> uh, no, I'll tell you, they told me it was 150 full trucks and it took three weeks to get them all the way over Holy wow. crap. Now, they said they, I, I shouldn't share this either i think it was something like seventy-five thousand barrels 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if that's a lot or a little. That's a lot. Like a lot. Is, that's but a lot I know, of barrels. Yeah, I know it's a lot. I've been over there and I saw the, <laughs> we went and saw the warehouse and it's uh, uh, it's expensive. So we don't we're not we're not lacking any whiskey. We've got we've got plenty, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but it, but it's cool because there is some old stuff like that. So there's some old awesome, stock man. for us to be able to do some really cool things. I mean, uh, you know, how is it possible for us to be a five year old distillery that's coming out with a, uh, you know, world class twenty four year old? Right. So yeah, I think that, that that that's really hats off to our master blender, Alex Chasco. Very nice. Yeah, good, good, great to know. So, and before we even move on uh, and, and along those notes, if it's been a while since you've tried Irish whiskey. Um, if you haven't tried Irish whiskey, don't, don't go buy the cheapest stuff you can, but like with any whiskey, don't go buy the cheapest stuff you can find. If you get into some of the 34, start with the, some of the 30, $40 price range stuff, uh, the tealings, uh, we've talked about red breast before. Um, I'm trying to think what else Jameson's green spot. spots oh yeah oh the, all the spots powers there's some good irish whiskeys now and what i tell people though too is have different expectations mm -hmm. and that's why it's kind of good to know up front what what genre of whiskey you have you know is it a scotch is it a, a canadian whiskey is it uh, irish is it japanese uh, is it you know sherry cast something along those lines just kind of re get your palate ready for what you're going to taste we've had some excellent excellent irish whiskeys that are outstanding so don't just disregard irish whiskeys or sexton another good example of a cheap irish whiskey that's really good it's 25 bucks or less mm -hmm. that one i have not had oh crap i'll bring some in october for you when you said that i thought you were going to make the joke of like Sex, like even when it's bad, like like Irish whiskey, even when it's bad, it's good. Like I totally thought you were going there, and you didn't. And so if I if I look shocked on my face, that's what it was. I would say no, it's not because I've had I, I have it. Well, I mean, I've had some bad scotch, I've had some bad bourbon, I've had some bad Irish whiskey. I played some bad golf too, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> I guess it's still whiskey, right? <laughs> All right, the single malt. Now I have had this before. I have a partial, just about two or three ounces left of a bottle over there. I'm surprised mm. my wife hasn't killed it yet. But Ooh, it smells so good. Yeah, love the smell of that. So oh, um, beautiful. So this one we were tasked with making mm. the uh, the best single malt that we could possibly come up with, and I think we've done a pretty nice job with it. Um, this is a little bit complex, so you guys are going to have to bear with me a little bit about the description on this guy. But uh, this is 100% uh, malted barley, single distillery, obviously. Um, the way that we kind of uh, distinguish ourselves with this, kind of like the other two, how we do uh, some different oh, barrel finishes or barrel aging on it. This one, we actually use five different wine barrels on this. Oh, um, wow. Damn. To me, when I get the nose on it, I feel like the backbone of this is sherry. They may disagree with me. I may be wrong on that, but to me, um, I know that there is a lot of sherry cask in here. And then uh, the rest of it is uh, is bourbon that's finished in other barrels. Um, there's a port finish that gives it, I want to say, like a, like a deep, like kind of ruby, grapey sort of thing going on. Um, there's a Madeira finish that gives it almost like kind of like a little uh, toffee sort of action to it. Um, there's a little bit of, uh, of that, uh, of that Cabernet barrel. Okay. It's not the same whiskey, same barrel. Obviously this is corn, okay. this is malted barley, but it has that same sort of characteristic where it's that dry, uh, French oak. Okay. And then, uh, and, uh, it's very berry forward. Yeah. Yeah. You get, you get a lot of berry. Yeah. yeah you very get a lot of berry. And then, uh, we do like a little bit of white burgundy finish as well. Oh. So we get some, uh, we get some barrels from white burgundy. And we'll finish our bourbon barrel aged whiskey in that. And so it's. Uh, he said that he said that if he had the choice, he'd never make this whiskey again because it's so complex. So much. Well, there's just so, so many good. barrels to keep track with, and, and right. trying to recreate that over and over again. Yeah. But he was so proud of it, and uh, and it's. I mean, it's really it's really so interesting. I get so many different things every time I go. So it's I get tropical complex. fruit. I get chocolate. I get. Yeah, dryness, mm -hmm. like sweetness. I mean, it's really well. And, and talking about trying to recreate, I think that's why a lot of people have gone to like labeling batches, you know, like batch one, mm -hmm. batch two, yeah. batch three, because and they admit there's going to be differences. We can't, you know, we can't recreate the same thing every time. So 
label them batches. There's going to be differences and pick your favorite. Yeah. I think our version of that is that we'll, uh, we put, we put a year on there. Uh, we put, you know, when it, uh, when it comes out, this 1127 is what we're drinking. I think that's what I sent you over there. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's gonna, there's going to be some natural change from batch to batch and I think that that's to be expected, but, uh, but for us, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really more about kind of getting, it's, it's about an idea of what we're looking for. Yeah. What else you got in there? I was looking, yeah, I didn't, uh, my other one is uh, April of 2015. So there you go. So instead of doing like batch one or batch two, we put a date on there when we bottle it. And so, you know, and they're going to change if you taste them next to each other. They're going to be a little bit different. I'll, but, do that. I'll do that and see. Yeah. I like lots of berries and chocolate. So much berries. Yeah. The, the, the nose on this is very fruit, uh, berry forward. Very nice. See, I mean, I get pineapple and tropical fruit on it, and then I get like a ton of chocolate on the palate on this guy. I get dark berries. But it's got that green, that 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 single maltness to it throughout, and so I feel like you really know what it is. And so when I was talking earlier about how we wanted to do Ooh. something that would be palatable for our oh. bourbon drinkers, this is something that we wanted to, uh, you know, it, that we wanted to really kind of encompass with our uh, with our Scottish whiskey drinkers and something that they would find interesting and a little bit different, but they could relate to. So I think single malt is uh, definitely, um, you know, a good product for that. Yeah, I love Yeah, I drink a lot of scotch. This is definitely a scotch drinker's Irish. I mean, this is really good. This is, this is definitely Chocolate good scotch first running. In a glass. For sure. This is great. Butter, butter covered, chocolate covered berries. That Perfect. Nailed, that nailed it. That's yep. it. <laughs> They're so creamy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, that Irish butteriness is definitely on this one. Oh yeah, and the fruits, citrus. Mm, yeah, the citrus is coming out now. Well, it's also got that little bit of that pepper finish, but then it kind of dies back back down. Whereas the other one, it kind of amped up. I'd say a little bit of honey, a little bit of powdered sugar as well. Oh, nice all around sweetness. Yeah. Uh, I get just a just a dash of the rose petals. Kind of that floral sherry finish I get with some Irish whiskeys. Yep. I want to drink yeah. whiskey with this guy every day. Like, yeah, you know, he's like the yeah. best. And yeah, the palate's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> it's subjective, so you're not wrong. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah, you guys know. I, I, I appreciate it. this. Is this is awesome. this is one of my favorites. I, I love this whiskey, and I sit here and talk about it all day. It's it's pretty incredible. Mm, it's so tasty. So rich and deep. I almost get a little bit of a leathery on the finish. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 super complex. I think that every time that I taste it, I get it's another different. little note to it. And then I'll nose it and then I'll go back to the palate and be different than it was before. Can't have nice things. Whoops. I just you know, I just realized I haven't even added any water to any of these we've been drinking. There's no need. So <laughs> I was gonna add a drop to this just to see, because yeah, it's now we're all these forty six percent. I don't know if we even talked about it, did we? Yeah, we we feel like ninety two is our sweet spot uh, mm -hmm. almost across the board. You might find some stuff in Europe that's a little bit different, but for the most part, we feel like ninety two is kind of that sweet spot. It's high enough. Um, we don't we don't chill filter our whiskeys, so it's high enough that we don't get the cloudiness in there that you would get if you didn't chill filter, like say an eighty proof. It would become cloudy and it wouldn't it wouldn't be shelf stable, so to speak. But 92, it keeps it from being cloudy, but uh, but it also allows us to have all those big, bold flavors in there. So I think that that's important. Yeah, it's definitely bold. It's got so much going on in this one. The other two are really good. This one just takes the takes the yeah, cake. I need to spend a lot of time complexity. With this. I mean, there's a lot going on in here. I mean, I think, I think a drop of water might have actually helped it too and, and opened it up and it actually made it a little bit fuller. Well, and this is fresh open, so who knows what's going to happen after it sits for a little bit. That's true, too. Uh, Julian, before you got into whiskey, what was your drink? What was my drink? Oh, man, I was one of those nerds that liked Fernet and, like, all that bitter shit, Campari. And, Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. I was one of those cocktail guys that, like, Ouch. yeah, if it, if it could shock the palate, then I was into it. No. <laughs> And then I turned 30 and I decided I want to drink that shit anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, Shit's the correct word. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I started getting into, uh, you know, things that were a little bit more subtle and things that you could really kind of sip and enjoy and, uh, you know, find the complexities in. I think working your way through, you know, 
three or four glasses of whiskey is one of life's true pleasures, you know, at the Absolutely. end of the night and, and watching it change as, as it kind of, uh, you know, changes with the air. I was, I was a wine guy before any of this. Mm -hmm. And so I find that, I find that there's a lot of correlations with wine and whiskey mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and, and yeah, I think, I think that there's uh, I think that, it, I think that it's really fun Ooh. to just kind of like sit down even by yourself and just kind of, you know, enjoy, enjoying a dram or two or three and just, and just watching it watching kind of how it changes and how your palate changes with it. And, you know, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, fa it's fascinated me for sure. Tan I just got some tangerine on this thing on the yeah. Yeah. after that water. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's probably bringing out a little bit more of the tropicalness. Mm -hmm. I put a little water in mine. I'm getting some pineapple on it. <laughs> yeah. I am mango too. Yeah. It's super tropical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's damn good with the water. I can't wait to spend more time with this. Yeah. It's an unusual one. And that's just, Really, really nice. And I think that I think that it was back to my wine days that kind of what, what struck me about whiskey is how it can taste different, sip to sip, moment to moment, oh, yeah. hour to hour, week to week, month to month. You know, that, it really is. It's a it's a living, breathing thing, and it's something. I th well, I think the good ones do that. I don't. I don't think the bad yeah. ones do. The bad ones are just no. bad. Uh, the the good <laughs> ones the good ones change. <laughs> yeah. really that that difference that you find, you know, as you sit down with it. So yeah. And yeah, I mean, there's people that Bart and I work with and they're surprised that we can sit down because we'll tell them we, we sit down with an ounce of whiskey and it might take us an hour uh -huh. to drink it because exactly. you're, just, you're just sitting there sipping and you're enjoying the flavor and tasting it. And you're seeing some of that evolution uh, in it as it as it gets air and breathes a little bit. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's very good. It's not just slamming six beers in a row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get you drunk. You have you a bad hangover. You got that going for you. Right. <laughs> I'd much prefer to sit and sip. Yeah, S sit yeah. for sounds way better. Okay, so uh, let's, moving off of teeling a little bit, I always say my favorite genre of whiskey is sherried scotches. Sarah, what's yours? What's your favorite genre of whiskey? A high proof bourbon. High proof bourbon. That's good. Those are good too. The higher, the better. <laughs> <laughs> And what's your what's been your favorite so far? Uh, I've got this uh, Jack Daniel's single barrel barrel proof. Oh yeah, we call that the double barrel. Yeah, <laughs> I like that one a lot. Right? Um, those, are good. those <laughs> are good. Have you had Elijah Craig barrel proof? Um, yes, I have. But you think I the Jack that. Daniel's is better? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That Elijah Craig tastes like uh, I had one the other day. It was a single barrel, and it tasted like mm. uh, it, it tasted like bacon and cake almost. Like it was so vanilla, I mean, in a beautiful way. Right. Baking spices, cinnamon, vanilla, kind of a caramel thing mm -hmm. going on. And you had no idea that it was barrel proof when you were tasting it. It was just like awesome. And yeah. see, I like that Jack Daniels because it has that punch. Yeah. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. like a little bite. Yeah. 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 I there's, like it. There's one Elijah Craig single barrel we had that uh, was a raspberry chocolate cake. I think it was mm. awesome. Oh, so good. My friends had it. Sounds good. So good. All right there, Jack Daniel, single barrel, barrel proof. We call it the double barrel. What's Which your barrel's in that proof? one? That one is 65.5. Nice. And I think that's my third bottle of it. Well, that's a good reason. It's, it's the one Jack Daniels I actually really like. Is the rest of them not a big fan of? Oh, now, come on. Hey, their rye is good. You know I don't like it. <laughs> their rye is outstanding. Yeah, the rye. Yeah, the uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the square bottled rye is really good. Yeah, it's all right. That's yeah, single barrel. Genre outside of peated scotch. Matt, what's your, Matt, what's your favorite genre? You know, it's scotch. <laughs> Scotches because scotch is awesome. When well, narrow it, narrow it down. What kind of scotch? Peated, cherried, all. Everything just it depends on the day. It really does. Some days you want to get kicked in the nuts with like Freud, and <laughs> some days you want a nice space style look on Dronic. You just never know what you want to get. Just depends on the day. You just, or sometimes you take a whole tour of them all. Just depends on what's going on in your life. It's all good. But I like all whiskey in general. I mean, I, yeah. I don't, you know, I like Irish. I like Japanese. I mean, I like all of it, all of American stuff, even some Canadian, you know. Except for. Except for TX bourbon because it fucking sucks. <laughs> and Texas. except for what? TX bourbon because oh. it sucks. <laughs> and TX or Texas Crown. Oh yeah, Texas Crown. I don't like that either. Besides those two, we're good. <laughs> I think I'd take Kentucky Deluxe over those two. Ooh. 
and that stuff. I've bad. got I've got two bottles behind me. I won't tell you what they are. They're both American whiskeys, but I I don't know how I'm. I've told the wife I need to just pour them out, and she's like, "Don't pour them out." And I'm like, no, well, just, what else to do with them?" Well, what you do is you leave them at a party. Someone will drink them. I promise. <laughs> Or, or steal them. <laughs> you <They're> good. <laughs> as long as I don't have to drink them, perfect. I mean, TX bourbon is so bad. My mom put it in, in a Coke. She was, you ruined the Coke. It's so bad. Yeah. It's maybe I'll bring, maybe I'll bring these to Austin in October and you can try them and see what you think. Perfect. Someone will drink them. Sarah, are you going to be there? Oh yeah. All right. Good. Room's booked and ready to go. <laughs> Oh yeah, we'll be there as a channel too, so it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Hey, speaking of Texas, I had a uh, I had a uh, Garrison Brothers uh, barrel proof the other day that was actually really really outstanding. Mm. Done, you know, it was one of their cowboys, but it was a single barrel that they had done. Like I think it's oh, I want to say 132 proof or something yeah. like that. One of their cowboy whiskeys, wow, but they so done good. a single barrel for a uh, for a bar called Cottonmouth down in Texas or down in uh, Houston, Texas. Okay. And uh, it was uh, it was really outstanding. So if we're getting into sounds uh, like my cup of bourbon. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, come with me down there. And we'll share one. Let's go. <laughs> I'm down. So Julie and everybody likes to know we have brand ambassadors on, and sometimes sure. they only want to talk about their whiskeys. But what others do you? What's what's your genre? What uh, what other what else do you enjoy? Um. Yeah, like I, I like everything across the board. I hate to be like that generic answer. I don't I don't mm -hmm. mean it like that, but I, I really do. I enjoy distilled spirits a lot. I like wine a lot. Um, I, I like beers a lot, but really, um, I think if it was one thing, I, I really enjoy what bartenders do with spirits. And so I enjoy like kind of the art and uh, the craftsmanship of mixing, like taking, you know, like wh whatever one of the, you said tangerine in the, uh, you know, in the single malt and, you know, creating something with that and tangerine juice to kind of accentuate that and, uh, you know, I, it, whether it be like with a little bit of ginger or whatever it may be that they're doing, I really find that to be kind of a, a little bit of a blessing because you can have the same spirit over and over and over again, but you can have it in, you know, hundreds of different interpretations. And so that for me, I think is, uh, is really, really neat because you get, you get a chance to see uh, kind of everybody's take on, you know, what that spirit is and what that means to them and how it can kind of mirror with them and they can reflect it back to you in their right. own sort of way. And so, uh, and so, yeah, so I, I think that, I think that uh, the, the mixing and the blending part of it is really kind of one of the more fascinating aspects to Absolutely. me. Yeah, okay. So together. you just flew, you just flew yeah. to uh, New York yeah. and it's late at night. You're at your hotel and across the lobby, you can see they just have a small bar. Yeah. And so you're like, God dang, I need a whiskey. And yeah. as you're walking towards it, you can see the bottles on the shelf and you're thinking, please just have what? Oh man, that's a tough one. Oh, tough come one. on. There's one whiskey. Oh, name oh, one. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Sarah? Not Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, you know what? Uh, yeah, give me something from New York. Give me something I, local. Give me one of those Hudsons or something. Like, give me I, one of those, see, like uh, mine, I would say just pl just have Macallan Twelve. It's well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's part of it. Like, give me some. Give me something local. If you got something local there, I could be at a bar in Chicago. Give me something from Illinois. Or I could be at a bar in San Francisco. Give me something to make out there. Like, you know, like if, if I'm somewhere, I don't want to. I don't go eat at McDonald's when I'm in, you know, in Minneapolis right, or whatever. Right. You know, I want to eat something that's local and something that you know that they kind of enjoy there. I agree. Uh, same thing with yeah. beers. You know, if Absolutely. I'm gonna go drink a beer, like you know, if I'm gonna go somewhere, I don't know. You know, uh, yeah, give me give me something, give me some local. That's yeah. my answer. Local's definitely okay. a good answer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I always like to try the local. Except stuff. for Florida, I don't want any Florida whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what do you think? You've been in uh, customs at Heathrow Airport for six hours, and you've been it's a long day. You flew overnight. You're walking into the airport bar or the, hair, the hotel bar, and you're looking at their limited bottles, and you're saying, please, God, just have. I would say to, to dear God, please have Lafroy 10. There you go. Sure. That's good, a good call. Call. Yeah, because, I mean, yeah, then, especially if you're having a rough day, Lafroy 10 is definitely the way to go. Or if they really get lucky, the cash strength 10. That'd be <laughs> even better. Yeah. <laughs> it's pushing it. I know, but <laughs> Sarah, what you, Sarah, what are you looking for? Though? They may have it. Exactly. Yeah. They yeah. might. They might have it. I, I'm, I'm the same. I want local. I want to try what you're making in your area. Good. Cool. 
Yeah, or give yeah. me something that Bacardi makes so I can expense it. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me some sapphire. Or some... <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well, we're coming up. We're right at uh, just short of the uh, hour mark. I think that was a, gr a great show. Uh, thank you, Julian, for joining us. And thank you for uh, you did send these whiskeys uh, for me to uh, drink along with you guys there. I appreciate it. Very good. Uh, Matt and Sarah, why don't you guys introduce or not introduce. Tell everybody where to find you at. And, um, and then we'll have Julian do the same and uh, we'll wrap it up. All right, we we are obviously on YouTube as we Crusaders, and then we also have Instagram and Facebook. You can find us over there. Uh, we'll be down in uh, Austin in October for the Bastards Ball, so that's where you can find all of us. And uh, we're having an event here tonight with probably about forty people or so, trying a bunch of tealing good stuff, and we'll have a great time. Colonel Julian. Yeah, so uh, you can get me at Julian Pagan on Instagram, or there it is. Hey, <laughs> can you guys see it? Bring it in closer. Uh, there get it all the way up there. Yeah, yeah, so there's, 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 the business, the there's the business card. So get at me. Julian Fagan, I got to make sure. I don't know if I've uh, got you on Instagram or not. I wish you would. appreciate it. Julian. <laughs> drinking whiskey anyway. So we'll it's fill that not, information. It's about anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he wants to see it. but <laughs> We'll fill that information in the comments because it's a little blurry. Okay, perfect. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, uh, thanks everybody that tuned in. Appreciate it. And uh, Friday night, I know some people in Dallas are waiting for Matt to wrap it up so they can enjoy their tasting at his house. And uh, too bad Bart wasn't here. We'd only be halfway through the show. <laughs> <laughs> totally true. <laughs> Bart will be if you're in the Denver area and you want to go to Stranahan's tomorrow night. He'll be there for the uh, Cask Thief uh, annual special event release. So stop by there, and I haven't—I don't know if I've seen West Jolly comment for a while. He should be uh, joining them as well. So uh, thanks everybody that tuned in, and Salancha, Salancha, dummies. <laughs> <laughs>